So yesterday I saw a Facebook post in a print on demand group and it honestly got me so fired up that I had to go live inside of my Facebook group about print on demand to talk about it. And honestly, this post is something that I see all the time from people that are just starting their print on demand store or those that have been running a store for a while and just haven't got the results that they want. But first, here's an analogy that I want you to listen really closely to because once I'm done with this, you'll kind of understand what I'm about to talk about with this Facebook post that I saw. Let's say that one of your friends came up to you and they said, hey, I've been going to the gym for the last six months. I've been watching YouTube videos about working out and dieting and all of that. And I've been going for six months and I haven't lost a single pound. All of my before and after pictures look exactly the same. It's like I've made no progress at all. Is this normal? You would look at them and say, well, no, that's not normal. It sounds like you've been doing things. So what's going on? A lot of times when I address things like this, people are somewhat resistant to it. They're almost offended by some of the things that I say. Sometimes I worry that people feel as if I am talking down to them. And honestly, it's not like that at all. I am not coming from a place where I think I know everything or that I figured it all out. I've just been doing this for a while. And at this point, I've seen a lot of things and I have some opinions about what works with print on demand and what doesn't. So you want to see the post that got me all fired up? I'm going to show it to you, but first I need you to do something in exchange for all of this awesome free print on demand content. Somewhere out there, there is somebody who is starting their print on demand journey. I need you all to actually just take one second and click the like button and help that person out because maybe YouTube will then recommend this video to them. And honestly, it helps my small channel to grow. So thanks for doing that. Let's take a look at the post. Am I doing something wrong? I have been running Facebook ads for or shine on products using the platform for two to three months now. I've tested 20 plus designs. I've spent about 500 bucks. I've got a bunch of link clicks, some add to carts, but no sales. And then they say, is this normal? Most times a landing page should see about a 0.5 to 1% conversion, but I'm not getting anything. Essentially saying, is this normal? You can see some of the comments that were left on this as well. Someone said, there's gotta be something wrong with your checkout. And then someone else said, I agree design is extremely important but I'm just surprised that he didn't get a single sale. Before I actually address that and break all of that down, I'm going to end up showing you print on demand stores in this video. Some of them, the stores look great, but their products need a lot of work. And then some of them, everything just sort of needs some work. And I'll show you an example of a really nice print on demand store that is likely crushing it. So remember the analogy I gave earlier where I talked about someone going to the gym, doing all the right things and literally not losing a single pound if someone said to you after doing all of that, is it normal? You would say, well, no, it's not. There's clearly something you are doing wrong. And the same is true here with this post. A lot of times I think people who are just jumping into print on demand, they almost view it as building a machine. Meaning if you just follow a process and if you set everything up just right and then you turn it on that it will somehow just produce results. And honestly, that couldn't be farther from the truths. In order to actually make sales, you have to create products that are awesome. You have to create a store that looks great and you have to have something that real people actually want to pay money for. Your customers are not fish. If you literally sprinkle a little bit of whatever inside of a fish tank, the fish are gonna go up there and they're gonna eat it. Your customers are not like that. I made recently a whole video where I kind of talked about this. You can check it out here. Uh, it's linked down in the description of this video as well. But here is the first store that we are going to look at today. And this one, honestly, I'm just gonna kind of scroll through it and let you guys take everything in. And if I sound a little bit fired up, that's because I am a little bit fired up. I get enjoyment out of making content and looking at print on demand stores. This is something that I have a lot of fun doing on my own with stores that I run and you know, hopefully this is helpful. So. Now that we've kind of scrolled through the whole store, what is this? What are they selling? First off, what niche is this, right? One of the most important parts with a print on demand store is choosing a great niche. Print on demand products really don't have any reason for anyone to buy them unless the design represents a really passionate niche, something that they're interested in or something that they identify with. A lot of these products are just random things uh, on, on shirts. It's like dollar sign is kind of in a different language. I'm not really sure what this is all about. This store reminds me of something where someone discovered print on demand and they decided that they were gonna create this like streetwear brand with dollar bills on the products and attempt to try and make some sales. Here's another store, right? If we start to scroll through it, it really has like no story here, right? It's just merchandise, literally just merch on top of merch on top of merch. And the actual things that they're selling are just some of the 
most random things ever. If we click into here, this is a hoodie that says Besties and it has a chip and a guacamole bowl. This one here has a couple of cartoon Barbie dolls essentially and it says Besties Forever and they felt the need to, on the bottom here, put the same design on several different products. And again, before we look at more stores, if any of these that I'm reviewing happen to be yours, I'm, I'm not trying to talk down to you. I'm just excited and, and fired up because I'm filming. I'm just trying to help, right? So I don't want any of this to be viewed as something that you should be discouraged about. Hopefully this will serve as helpful, right? And if you're watching this and you've done something similar on your store, hopefully that will help you to change course a little bit. Here's another store here. We'll just kind of scroll through it and let you guys kind of sort of take everything in. You can see that, you know, the store is relatively empty in terms of content, right? There's really no underlying brand here. I think the logo needs a lot of work. It kind of looks funny up there on the top of the store, just this blue square and everything else is just kind of basic, right? We have hoodies that say, be kind. We have shirts that say, love more, a bunch more shirts with some random quotes on it. And honestly, like the first store, there's not a solid niche here. One of the things you have to realize is when you're doing print on demand, you are entering a business model that is very unique. If you are selling any sort of a gadget, like take this right here, right? This is a adapter for cables to plug into a MacBook laptop. If you were selling this, you would be selling it based on the problem solving ability that it has for someone, right? They need to be able to use these plugs, but they only have this on their laptop. So they buy it. With print on demand stuff, our hoodies, our blankets, our pillows, our jewelry, our shoes, our leggings, all of that, it solves nobody's problem. You have to give them a reason to want it. You have to give them a reason to pay you for it. And that reason is the niche. If you're just creating products that just say rise and I grind or beast written in a bunch of different fonts or what doesn't kill you disappoints me. Just kind of like these funny sarcastic quotes. At the end of the day, people have seen this stuff everywhere, whether it is at Walmart or Target for five bucks or on the front page of Amazon or just everywhere on like Etsy. In order to actually create winning products, you have to first choose an awesome niche and this is just not it. Here's another store here offering backpacks, right? With essentially just some ad abstract designs, basically repeating patterns. I'm assuming whoever created this store is likely some sort of an artist. But again, at the end of the day, these are $38. This is actually in pounds. So this is probably a little bit more than 38 US dollars. And you know, there's really no niche here, right? If someone stumbled across these online, this is first off a no name brand. I'm not sure if you can see it in the frame, but I have an Adidas backpack over there that was likely about the same cost. The only reason I bought that was because it's Adidas. If someone is considering a backpack purchase, they're first and foremost, most likely making that purchase based on the brand, right? Not on some abstract design that is placed on top of it. So before I show you the store that is actually doing a great job with a lot of this, I sort of just want to recap so you guys can fully understand what I'm telling you and what you're hopefully getting out of this. First and foremost, print on demand and any type of e-commerce store is a real business. You need to create great products. If you're running any sort of marketing and you know not making sales or just putting yourself out there and not making making sales, you shouldn't ask the question like, is this normal? There's no normal here. You're creating a real business. Here's the next store. This is called GrooveBags.com. This is not my store. I don't know whose store this is. It's just an awesome store that I sometimes reference here on the channel. Now you can see that if we go to collections, they have focused on niches. You can see they have cats, chickens, dentistry, dogs, guitar, horses, and on and on and on and on. If we click into, let's just say teaching, they've created some really cool products for teachers. If you are a teacher and you are scrolling on social media somewhere and you come across something like this, like you might go, wow, this is a really cool pair of shoes. If I wore those to school, I might be pretty hot stuff, right? And that might get them to actually want to purchase it. The same is true here. They've essentially chosen piano players as their niche, right? And they've created these really cool pair of shoes, right? If you are someone who plays piano, this might be a really unique product product for you compared to some of the things we saw earlier, like those abstract sentences and abstract designs just kind of thrown all over various products. So if you've watched the video this far, uh, hopefully you've clicked the like button at this point, uh, but make sure to check the links down in the description. I have some of my most helpful videos down there so you guys can go through those and go through you know some more content. Really the goal with all of this, even though I seem upset and that I seem like mad or fired up or whatever, I'm really not. I'm trying to create content that helps 
There's a lot of voices here on YouTube. And I think a lot of times people like to make this business model seem easy or you know that it's always good, right? And hopefully what I'm able to do here on my channel is show you that sometimes that's not the case. There's people out there that are actually starting these businesses and literally throwing money away because the stores that they're building are never really gonna ever turn a profit. And hopefully you saw that today with some of the examples. That's all I got for you guys today. Thank you for watching. And like I said, if you're watching this far, definitely hit that like button and I will see you guys in the next video.